All right. So we're here uh, with Adrian, Michael, and Robin of Total Refusal. Um, thank you guys all for being here. Uh, I'd like to just give you a minute and introduce yourselves. Um, sure. So um, I'm the second condor to the right. My name is Robin. <laughs> um, and I think... Um, to the left is uh, uh to the right of uh, to to my right uh, um wing side is uh, Adrian and to the left is Michael we Hello. are three members of uh, the collective total refusal a pseudo marxist uh, media guerrilla all right yeah all right. and what we do is we do artistic interventions in video games um like red dead the redemption 2 where we find it uh, ourselves today is we find ourselves as uh, California condors sitting atop a beautiful mountain. Um, and yeah, thank you again for being here. Uh, my name is Zach Feldman. Uh, I'm the curator at the Goethe Institute in New York, where we have currently on view uh, a selection of videos and films from Total Refusal. Today, we'll spend some time talking about their work and uh, exploring this world we're in. So I think with that, um, oh, I'd like to mention to the audience who's there right now, uh, please go ahead and uh, if you have questions that come up during the stream, you just uh, can submit them right in the chat and I'll try to integrate them as we um, walk and talk. And yeah, so with that, maybe let's uh, take off. I'll follow sure, you. Well, is everyone, yeah. everyone ready to, to take a fly? Yeah, I'm uh, going to follow your guys' lead. All right, I'm leading. If someone gets lost, let me know. I will, um, yeah, get you back. All right. right. Our teleportation god go. and guide for this tour. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Unlike Let's Robin, go. who is the weather god. Let's go in three, two, one. Okay. All right. I think there you are. One of you. Yeah, oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> So we I lost see each you other all. already. No, no, no I, I, I think we've got everyone, right? <laughs> we're we're all together. I, I got you. I'm uh, taking up the the rear, so I'm I'm right here in the back. We Perfect. can circle over that lake until everybody is at mm -hmm. the same spot. Yeah, and uh, tell us a little bit about you know where we are. Like, so I mean, as I mentioned, we're birds. We're in flying in Red Dead Redemption. Um, how is this possible? Yeah, well, I mean. Adrian, yeah, starts. it's best if you say something about this. <laughs> um, so um, this is not the, the, the game. It isn't supposed to let you fly a bird. Right. Therefore, everything is a, is a bit clunky. So if there is um, if there are any flying accidents occurring, then um, forgive us. So <laughs> um, we, we have um, created, um, together with a mother named RCP from Great Britain, um, several mods for the game so we can um intervene even better into um right into the code of the game and uh, one of the mods that um were designed for us to um use the way in a different manner was um the rcp birds mod that we are using at the moment maybe robin if are, you want to add yeah no for people who are not so familiar with video games um this is uh a game called Red Dead Redemption 2. This is actually a Western shooter game mm -hmm. um, by Rockstar Game. It's, it's one of the biggest productions. Um, and it's an open world, so usually you have your, you know, your horse and you are like a cowboy riding around and having adventures here. But And that's exactly what we do. We use uh, game worlds, but in alternative ways. And usually we have great fun, you know, narrating our own stories in here and um usually we do like two things one is like yeah telling stories that we find important or or interesting or necessary to tell and on the other hand we always also somehow formulate a critique of the medium of video games or reflect on what this game what games are and especially big games and what role they play and have a critical eye on on these kind of things Right. I, I think maybe this would be a good chance um, to talk a little bit about like the history of Total Refusal. Um, you founded as a collective uh, only in 2018, so this is 
six years or so of work. Mm -hmm. um, could you talk a little bit about how you two, uh, how you all got together, um, and uh, yeah, like you know, more or less your origin story. All right. Um, yeah. So uh, some of us, well, Robin and Leon and Susie have been friends for a long time, and then we got to, and then I got to know the guys and girls at the uh, at the at university. Mm -hmm. But mostly in the beginning, uh, what we were doing was all of us were gamers, so we were playing games together. And uh, one of the games that we played was Tom Clancy's The Division. It's a uh, it's a a very reactionary. I don't know if you're familiar with Tom Clancy, the uh, the now dead author of these like <laughs> Republic, very very reactionary. Many you know, spy books, right? Like yeah, dozens and dozens books, of them. The, yeah, prolific yeah, yeah, author exactly. of spy right. books. And right, and the he's, novelist of the states. Right. Yeah, yeah. I heard he had a tank in his garden somehow, <laughs> oh, like as a, okay. a yeah, a, a World War Two Sherman tank as a I don't know. Uh, to pop as a decoration object in his garden, whatever I guess. Um, his his games are or his his stories and characters are quite popular in the gaming world as well. And one of the games that picked up on that was Tom Clancy's The Division Two. And I'm actually not even going to go into the storyline, but the the gist of it was that this game played in uh, in Manhattan, and they had modeled the world of Manhattan in a really quite astonishing um, detail but this detail didn't really play a role in the game at all since it, you know you had your typical combat gameplay very martial all you did there was fight and and so uh, Robin and Leon came up with the idea to just kind of ignore this intended gameplay and 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 go on architectural tour through the game because right. so much of the architecture was depicted in such right. a Ah, oh, to to the right. To the right. Oh, to did right. I lose you guys? Oh, there's a there's oh. a coach in the water on the right. That's where we had it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna follow the river, and if I if it turns out I lost you, I'm just gonna have you. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm uh, I'm right behind somebody. I don't know who it is. I see also somebody else in the distance. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm having a bit of behind. trouble flying, but I'm uh getting getting a little bit better <laughs> as, okay. as we go along. <laughs> <laughs> oh well we'll find each other again and if not then we can figure it out i see i see all of you i think we're in a, oh yeah yeah, just, yeah yeah i see yeah, everybody but... as well now i mean oh, i'm together. not sure if, if this is some of you guys but there's definitely a bird flying <laughs> yeah but i, I think, think we're all together. Together. Yeah. <laughs> I bird th yeah i think we're all together as well so yeah so anyway um the robin and, and leon came up with uh, which was originally not a, a film but a live performance, where right. we, we toured the uh, uh, the city together with like urbanists and other guests and discussed uh, you know social questions, uh, uh, urbanism, city planning, and the like. So we basically just used the the game as a as a yeah as a, for its for its for, for the assets or for the world that provided, but ignored the gameplay. Which is always great fun, of course, because it's. Kind of absurd, right? I mean, this is such a heavily militarized game world. This is really difficult to make an architecture tour because you're always like under fire and constantly the NPCs are like attacking you and trying to prevent you from having a lecture. <laughs> like it's always kind of fun to have the game, which also like in this artist talk also to have you, you know, to have you interrupt, being interrupted a little bit and uh, <laughs> have something to react on. Right, a simulation, but uh, it, it has some vestiges of uh, of our world, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that 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 was kind of the starting point. What Michael um, said, and we kind of did this first project, which was yeah, it was a performance. It was mm -hmm. just a a guided tour where we took people around the game world, explaining them something, um, and then yeah, the, we filmed it and made a film out of it but really it was never the idea to make like a, a big film or movie or anything but it just turned out to be actually quite people enjoyed watching it and it was kind of successful and it was screened on a lot of film festivals and it won even um, prizes and awards and stuff yeah and it's, so it's, it's featured of... in our exhibition <laughs> with you as well uh, yeah, so if you're is, yeah. in the new york area you can come by and, and view it for yourself or i believe it's also listed on your website yeah 
Oh, most of our things you can actually see, basically. For yeah, free as soon as we're page. allowed to release stuff on our website. Mm. <laughs> right. Um, but after this first project, then we kind of... It was really motivating, and we came up with uh, another ideas and other possibilities that you could... What kind of mischief you can do in within games. And more and more projects and ideas started to develop. And after some time, we adopted more people because we had many ideas and we found people we wanted to work with so somehow organically the collective grew somehow so yeah that, that's kind of how we how, how this all started yeah and, that's when adrian yeah. and Giona joined and and susie also and susie yeah i mean one of the so, things you you touch on in a little bit but i'd like to to probe a little bit more um is you know the fascination with the video game i mean you you'll mention that you were all uh, kind of independently gamers and and um, through that had become uh, friends um, but what for you is the kind of like critical power of the the video game like what what does this kind of cultural object hold that makes it you know a, a valuable um, a valuable resource to look at the uh, our culture and our societal values through I mean, I mean, we I get... could discuss this question for many, many hours. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I guess. Um, but, uh, I mean, I think they're interesting for many reasons, of course. Um, but one of them is that, I mean, they are really, these big games, they, are, they involve so much money. They're big projects. And they have to be, like, really mass culture products where... They, if they develop this, they they cannot go for, yeah. They they have to have a, a huge target audience in their minds, and everyone has to like them. So it's really like a place where you can see where this society is having like a consensus, or um, where basic values are discussed, but in a very specific way because they have to make money with this. <laughs> so there's a lot to observe if you if you want to learn about this society i think a video game is just really a good place to to start your observations yeah and at the same time um because oh no of... i got stuck i got oh, stuck in your bridge i saw you crash into the bridge as <laughs> no, well. no. should we should yeah, we try to land on the bridge we can no, land let's try the bridge. yeah let's give let's it a try. try okay middle of the bridge uh-huh okay well, let's, let's see how that's gonna go Yes. All right. Oh. I landed, but uh, I'm a little far away. I think I might need a, a teleportation over to whoever's <laughs> okay. uh, teleportation I can, god. I can do it. All right. It's happening. No, I'm fine where I am. I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna be the oh, other one who's just a couple of meters off the side. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> get a let's get a good view. A nice uh, nice picturesque framing here. That's beautiful. Easy. But uh, do you like the weather, or should I change something? I think it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful day. It's actually really scenic. Yeah. yeah. The haze is beautiful. Are we in any danger? Do the trains come by? Let's see. Well, I don't. don't. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we... I guess we'll find out. But <laughs> <laughs> did you did you um, uh, observe all the beautiful um, wildlife that we had passed, like these? This is one of the really crazy things about this game is that there's so many different animals and they this is such a lively game world. This is just absurd. It really I can is. You see a guy yeah. sitting on a horse down there at the shore. Do you see him? Like where we in the direction that we came from. Mm hmm Yeah. Uh, just looking at the water. Oh yeah. No, oh, he's just meditating or something. Yeah, I, guess. I think he's doing like the, I the spotted melan him yet. The yeah, he's contemplating. He's doing the melancholic cowboy thing, I think, where he's just you know, <laughs> Uh, staring at the water. On the other side, downstream, there is uh, plenty of deer. I cannot move there, uh, <laughs> but I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> for for our audience, um, as soon as we let the birds land, we cannot move anymore. We're just stuck in one place, so that's why we cannot like walk around or something. Yes, yeah, also it's, uh, landing flying or nothing for us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. And and landing is terrible because we have to uh, insert a command and then we just drop down to the floor. So this is quite tense. 
But I mean, all of these are uh, indicative of uh, like the kind of interventions. We, we talked about it a bit before, the interventions with the mods um, in this video game uh, universe. So, you know, it's, mm. it's already quite open. And then um, engaging in this way, it, it opens up even more possibilities and pushes the uh, intended design limits of the game a bit past their own capacities. Mm. Um, I mean, that's a theme that shows up in another of the films uh, featured at the Goethe Institute right now in Super Wonder. Um, and maybe I'll just uh, turn it over to you to talk a little bit about this film. And um, because it's also filmed within Red Dead Redemption. Um, and yeah, maybe I'll just turn it over and you can talk a little bit about that film and uh, yeah, the the uh, notion of universe that's within it. Mm. I mean, Super Wonder was the, the first work that I was involved in and it was uh, designed for a 360 degree um, cinema screen that you were standing in. And uh, that was I didn't quite know that a... actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I think, 15 or 17 meter lengths in total. So um, we, we knew that we would have um, too little screen space, too little pixels in the, in the, in the width. So what we did is we were um, putting three computers next to each other with ultra-wide screens. And we um, put um, strings, um, physical strings on the screens. So we knew exactly what was in the frame and we could adjust the frames to each other. Okay. Which was technically um, quite a quite a stunt to do so we had, for every shot we had to readjust so the screens would align to each other so it gave this 360 so it created that 360 degree scope for the film and uh, what what we tried to look into was um the landscape of the video game and the world and especially um the borders of the world and mm -hmm. um, we, we we tried to 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 find out what is what is behind the invisible walls that frame this world and um, therefore, in, in the film, we, we fly with um, hot air balloons that are um, magnificent and, uh, yeah, try to, try to explore this, um, yeah, the edges of the world. And what we found there is quite um, fascinating and uh, we hope we can um, visit the, this half rendered world in the end of the world. Yes, yeah, so someone we... wants to add. <clears throat> shall, shall we, we like, save it for then? Shall we I continue we flying should. a bit, maybe? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's a great Let's idea. take off, yeah. Still got a ways to go. So uh, for the viewers, you can see on my screen, this is the command that uh, one has to enter. <laughs> so you see how, how it's a little bit uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. more tedious than, than uh, just the, the, the average designed um, game within you know the, the normal Rockstar universe. Hmm. Zach, um, you're still on the bridge, or no? I'm t I'm I'm off. I'm I'm uh, right behind you all. Oh, perfect. perfect. Uh, but you all flew okay, so... in different directions, so I'll I'll take no, no, my no, no, pick no. and I'll follow one of you. <laughs> <laughs> we will follow the coast to the left, and you see there is a city way in the way back in the distance. All right. Maybe you see the city lights, so just just follow the coast. Maybe one uh, funny anecdote out of this absolutely ridiculous super wonder uh, filming situation where we had uh, three screens and three computers aligned to next to each other we had uh, three hot air balloons uh, controlled by players in the air and we wanted to make a shot where three birds like us also controlled by players uh, flew in on one side of the, of the camera direction and left on the other side so i think it took us like five hours to create the shot <laughs> and yeah, end, I remember that day. It was a that terrible, was absurd. terrible, absurd shot to make, and in the end, it worked. But uh, the birds were so tiny in the in the camera perspective <laughs> that you couldn't see it, even though it was on a fifteen meter screen. It was, um, yeah, frustrating mm. but fun. But we found it so we found it so fun um, that actually game worlds they they usually they kind of like from how this is built is basically usually like a flat map where you can walk on like open world games usually like squares and then around it you have like the universe kind of turning around it but it's like it's like really like people i don't know in the middle ages or even before that would imagine how the world would look like we're like flat in the middle and then with the universe like turning around it and we found it so funny that you know that you start with um 
in this 21st century you have this world machine this kind of that pre-copernian yeah <laughs> even like pre-ptolemyan kind of world <laughs> yeah. view of, of, of how how the universe would look like and stuff so that was <laughs> it was just so fun that we started like thinking about yeah about the creation of worlds um, um yeah as a as a kind of narration within uh red dead redemption right it's a it's a kind of funny meditation on, on like mathematics and functionality right because these earlier models of the the way the universe worked they did for the time a short period of time work mathematically mm -hmm. like they made they did make a certain kind of sense <laughs> really <laughs> and uh, i mean essentially that's what a game is doing too right i mean it's creating an illusion um, and it, it does whatever it needs to to create yeah. that illusion. So it's yeah, kind of working in, in opposite directions. Um, I, I find particularly interesting what Robin mentioned, the universe around the map, because um, it looks like, a, I would say, like a proper sky if we look at it. Um, I, I think yeah. you can see it on the sex screen. Yeah. But um, in, in video game programming, this is called a, a skybox, and it's just a 3D object dome surrounding us. And there's a picture of the sky mapped on it. So obviously these stars, they are not uh, stars. They're just part of a picture that is wrapped around us. Yeah, so is if it a we have a sphere if... here, I think, in Red Dead Redemption? Like it's a spherical Probably. object, right? So we're basically it's inside a, a huge sphere, yeah. Or dome. Right. Yeah. But with the several layers and, and they have really um, elaborated clouds on several levels. And I mean, this is it's a very elaborate game. But it's right. it's like, I mean, it's it's kind of, you know, like a theater um, um, as a, as like basically a, a Gesamtkunstwerk. We would call this in German. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> well, I want to get a, back a little bit to that because I I want to ask you about the music um, in uh, uh, in uh, Super mm. Wonder because it's uh, it seems to me a little bit of an outlier. Of course, music is in some other uh, uh, other of your videos. But it really takes uh, the foreground here. It's um, mm -hmm. Richard Strauss's Alpen Symphony, um, yeah. like a can canonical piece of program music. Could could you talk a little bit about that and its relation to nature? Maybe our musician Adrian. <laughs> I mean, um, actually, it was uh, um, Robin's girlfriend Adina Kami, who is a great musician who re rearranged and. Uh, recomposed the Alpen Symphony. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say topic wise or um, yeah, the, the main topic of, of Super Wonder is, is, the, is the romanticist view on the world and uh, how to sort of um, deconstruct this view. So um, we thought that for this um, astonishing mountain landscapes and um, so on, we would um, Need something very romantic music wise and decided um for this because we thought it's uh, ridiculously underlining the postcardish um landscapes that we see around us yeah that's that maybe we can change the weather to to some day in time it's it's kind yeah. of yeah you feel like changing you had enough of this of um yeah maybe some Right. Oh, waking up bright and early. <laughs> yeah. All right. I see oh, we yeah. have a questions here in the chat. Oh. Uh, curious if you've received any legal threats from game manufacturers. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, That's a very popular uh, question. Um, yep. It, it's. I mean, you know, there there's a community of people doing artworks and movies um, within video games. It's a small community, but mm -hmm. there are people who are doing this professionally, and we are one of them. And I think we know almost all of them now, also. So it's it's kind of sm it's like a small scene, um, and usually, you, you know, asking the game developing companies for to do this like totally legally. Is someone that almost never anyone had the chance to, you know, to, to to get because the gaming companies they don't they don't give you the right to do that really because why should they do that? They don't really have a benefit. You cannot pay them anything, and they don't care for small money that we could pay them. So uh, that's something that they usually never do. But um, so to work with the games, you have to just do it. Otherwise, you cannot do this. Um, and from the legal perspective, it is, on the one hand, there's 
no one, as far as we know, ever got really problems doing this because usually the game designers or the companies are actually, you know, they like if people use their games and they don't have a lot to win from you also. Right. Um, and secondly, you know, given the... Um, legally, it would be challenging to really fight this through um, in accordance with um, the law of the country where the developing company is based. Um, but yeah, for most countries, that's it's not so easy to win this. And, and um, yeah, so you just do it if you want. It, and Yeah, it, I mean, it falls on the fair use, for example, I yeah. think in the US. But, but uh, in reality, of course, even if it would, you wouldn't go into a legal battle with, with any of the, uh, like, for example, Rockstar who made this game. Uh, but it... it Realistically speaking, it's not going to be a problem because the flip side um, of there of this being a small scene with not a lot of money involved is that it's also not that interesting to the legal departments of the uh, developers. Right. Yeah. I mean, it leads me to a to another thought. Um, so our viewers uh, didn't see this, but if you've ever played the game, the loading page has this uh, kind of beautiful sequence of. Uh, daguerreotypes uh, being developed. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they're clearly animated in the same style of the game um, with the, the characters, images, um, mm -hmm. and all of the trappings of, of, the, of what Red Dead Redemption offers in terms of, you know, style, style and all of that. But um, it did make me kind of think about what we're doing here, right? Like we have a virtual camera in this virtual world. Um, it's, it's photographic but also not. How do you guys think about that? I mean, is uh, like, how do you understand yourselves as um, like filmmakers uh, without the apparatus of, of the, the camera, so to speak? I mean, I would, I would shoot in that we have ordered the apparatus into the game. So if you insert the command RCP Cinecam, you will get a proper cine camera with all the depth of field and uh, zoom capability. That oh, you really? Need. Okay. So film, yeah, really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we even, so we even modded the camera into the game. Um, yeah. But maybe maybe someone else wants to pick up on the yeah, question. That being said, though, I think uh, the majority of our projects actually don't involve any mods or or very few mm. mods um because I mean, and this is gonna derail slightly from your question which i guess we can then yeah yeah on. no please but 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 i think in like a lot of our projects we the tools that we use are the exact tools that any player who would be able to log into the game can use so we there we don't use any specific modifications and and this is interesting because it always also um, when you're working within the confines of the intended gameplay, firstly, um, it, it allows you to establish a critical relationship with the gameplay because a lot of the things that we criticize or that we analyze or think about in, in relation to the gaming media isn't just the narrative or the characters. It's also uh, a lot of it is implicit in the gameplay. You know, which is oftentimes it's something you don't think about, but is very clear. Like you log into a game and you have red and blue dots on your map, and immediately you know what you're doing without any. You know, it's so streamlined that you don't need to contemplate on what the game wants from you. And um, and, and 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 secondly, it 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 also oftentimes these limitations uh, force you to think about. Um, I guess creative or fun solutions of how to um, how 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 to perform a specific thing in the game. For example, we have a film that deals with the topic of desertion, mm -hmm. and it's recorded in a shooter where you can't even you can't put away your weapon. It's like a first-person shooter. Uh, um, so you know, how do you do a right. performance that 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 you know uh, tr tries to find out whether it's possible to desert in a game when you can't even throw up your hands or throw away a weapon. And so you need to come up with solutions for that as well. Can I, I, can I, I interrupt I... for a moment? Please, yes. please do. Because we have to, we have to uh, land here. You see yes. the light brown pier? Um, we want to I see land. lots of yeah. piers and I also see so many birds flying by. Now that yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. The, the light company. brown pier. This is where the I'd carpenter like... is? We're going to... Yes. 
Yes, sorry, right. it's, and it's on the factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyond the factory. It's in the end of the city. All right. Okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm gonna... all landed. There we Perfect. are. Uh, shall we maybe, uh, for discovering the city, turn into something else than a bird, maybe, which can walk, yes. for instance? Yes, I agree. All right. Okay. Let's so let's our change bodies. shape. All right. Or what kind of shape do you go? Oh, we keep this. This is uh, RCP clothing. Right. Yes. Yes. And don't forget to make yourself invincible again afterwards. Yes, that's important. We go to animals. And I was playing around yesterday. I think I'll, I'll, I'll take this cow. And then I have to go back into settings and turn invi into invincibility. Uh, someone mentioned uh, when we were playing this out yesterday that they'll shoot the animals. Is that true? I, I think they will They will shoot us if something goes wrong. Sometimes <laughs> okay. we don't really understand. People get aggressive and then other times they don't. But did you did you notice that the pier is only half rendered? That it uh, stops over here and the people are sawing? <laughs> true, yeah. Sawing yeah, wood yeah, that yeah. is hanging in the in the air and someone oh, stands in the air like Jesus on the water. <laughs> I'm wow. still not quite at your location. I mean, the, uh, you know this like green metal railroad, uh, railroad pavilion where it says Saint Denis on it? Yeah, yeah, you have ah. to fly further, but I just bought you real quick, okay? Okay. Okay, so teleport. Uh, I mean, uh, all right, here you are. So ah. Adrian, you're... Ah. I'm the, uh, the rat. Yeah, who is, the, uh, who is this uh, buffalo? This is me. Alan. This is you. Okay, <laughs> I'm the cow. Um, yeah. And then we have a raccoon and me. a ram. Okay, Adrian's That's the raccoon, and Michael is this. It's a ram, right? Or a, a deer? No, it's definitely yeah, it's like a, a, a goat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we're walking Let's around. This is like this the the main town, right? Of uh, <laughs> yeah, of the, yeah, the settlement. Is... This is the biggest city in the game. There are other other smaller villages, but this is what the only like real city. Oh, I can't wait. Everyone's I'm sorry. I'm, oh, well. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm difficult to navigate. <laughs> yes. And as so, I'm hearing a lot of uh, like conversation snippets as we pass by. Um, I don't know if we've uh, spoken about NPCs, maybe just only in passing so far. I mean, this Just is the really, the, mm -hmm. yeah. The carpenter is. I mean, um, all of oh, these, yeah. all of these people around us are, are NPCs. Um, that's also the basis of uh, one of your latest films, uh, also in our exhibition, hardly working. Um, would someone like to, to talk a little bit about that one? And yeah, just this this general idea of uh, NPC and and how it relates to labor. Yeah, Robin, maybe you want to touch on that. Uh, yeah, so that's, um, the, 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 yeah, how to start with this? Um, yeah. I'm, I, by, um, by education, I am an anthropologist, actually. Um, and of course, that, so the, the whole project kind of started with the question how to, because there's all these NPCs, this, the people that, like this gentleman here, or the trumpet player, most of them, they don't really have like a big story or function or anything they're just here doing their stuff and their only job is kind of to make the game world kind of lively or appear lively and stuff but they don't really you know that they, they don't they have no story or something they're just extras and it's always so interesting to observe them because they kind of represent normality right they just have their job is to look normal and to make the game world realistic Believable, um, yeah. believable and, 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 and authentic somehow maybe so um, yeah it's interesting how the, give the, the developers imagine normality and, and so on and an important part of normality of course is work so most of them they have some kind of job so they do something during the during the daytime and they go out and do something and we had the idea to observe NPCs and, and yeah explore their their life world and especially what they do for a living um, and this is like this there's a street sweeper over there maybe this is a good example because mm. shall we go pay him a visit yeah let's let's 
Let's see what he's doing. Because if you observe them for a longer time, they really have like a circle of life. They they sleep somewhere, they get up in the morning and then they do their job. And this gentleman here, if you would observe him, we would find out that he's like cleaning this um, place every day uh, for a very long time, for hours and hours. And yeah, as you can see, it's never really getting any cleaner. <laughs> so of course they're right. they're really those machines. Um, they would never resist the absurdity of their own existence. But at the same time, yeah, what we also observed is that they they have glitches and they have everyone, if, especially if you observe them for a longer time, which is not really intended because you know they're marginal um yeah um, um beings it's it's not it's not that they are not created in a way for you to observe them for a long time they are you they are meant to be observed for a shorter time um and if you observe them for a long time then yeah they start glitching more and more and they fall out of their roles and we found that really interesting because as soon as they glitch they kind of become even a bit more human-like because they kind of resist to some degree to work or to function how it's intended yeah and yeah we found that the very somehow a really strong metaphor and it gave us a lot to think about society and our own kind of work relations and and what we can learn from them maybe or something I Adrian, are you harassing the gentleman? <laughs> Sorry. Just, I'm just looking You're at You're getting <laughs> right in his broom, huh? Um, <laughs> what I love about this, uh, about the film hardly working, is it's... Um, the tone is, is different than uh, some of your other films, which have kind of a more essayistic take. Mm -hmm. It really... It, it, it takes the poetic uh, of work and labor and this kind of repetitive Sisyphean task uh, very seriously um, yeah i mean for a long time also the or, or for much of the film i think i feel like the narration stays pretty close to the to what you're actually seeing yeah so there is a bit of intended like um um i guess repetitiveness uh in there or or, or doubling would be pro probably the better word uh, and that's also because we really like the the way that the film was made was Robin mentioned that he's an anthropologist, but like this this actual the making of the film was sort of ethnographic um, happened ethnographic, yeah, because yeah. we really followed them around for days uh, and observed them to and and kind of like took notes, you know, created logs of how they're spending their day and what they're doing, how they react to weather and and so. Right. And mm -hmm. I, I should uh, um, give you a chance to also talk about this. Like we earlier, we were talking about the interventions that you do do into this, um, uh, into these video games, like the mods, for example. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There were no interventions at all into the lives and work of these NPCs. So it really was uh, kind of like a fly on the wall direct cinema analogy. Is that right? Is that how yeah, you that, think about that's... it? That's how we did it. Uh, are you coming, uh, uh, um, oh. Zach? Uh, cow, you're stuck, or you need some? Uh... I'm, uh, I'm not stuck. Where, which way did you go? Oh, uh, uh, just uh, to the to the right. Uh, the yeah, Let's the, the, see. You will see the big buffalo. <laughs> oh yeah! How can I miss you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. It, so this is true. Yeah. I mean, we did uh, we did use a camera mod uh, to film because. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, otherwise you have your avatar, uh, yeah, in front of you all the time. That's kind of annoying, but that's really the only thing that we had changed. Um, and apart from that, it starts really from just from observing and yeah, close observation of um, of of this really really detailed and interesting game world, which is a masterpiece where uh, hundreds of people have been involved in making this real. So there's really a lot to observe. Mm. Yes. And maybe you'll notice that now the scenery is changing a bit as we're coming into like the, a rich, the rich, rich people's quarter. The, the, this is uh, quite interesting about Saint Denis as well as how it's uh, it's it's quite a, a, a good visualization of class society, uh, which is why this this city in particular, the game, but uh, in, in general, but this city in particular also stars 
in another project that uh, uh, maybe Adrian you can uh, touch on uh, Red Redemption. Yeah, um, sure. It's a uh, Red Redemption is a an in-game performance. We say it's a um, Bruce, a brute Marxist um, class anal analysis um, of the city um, that we usually start quite around here mm. in the in the mansions quarters in the upper class quarters where we where we um, observe the people living here. Maybe let's just they take a second to, to look around and, and mm -hmm. give our audience a so chance. Maybe we can to, go to into see. this garden. Sure, oh, shall we? The garden. Let's do it. These people shouldn't be the only ones to benefit from this splendor. Uh, we're giving them a zoo right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's quite a nice garden. Why have we never been here? Yeah. It's not the one from the tour, right? No, it's, no, not. it's not the one. There's no NPCs, which is unfortunate because we, we, we start the tour with asking the question, how can people live in houses um, that have bathrooms of the sizes of normal houses and uh, sit in a beautiful garden that they don't work in um, to play chess? There's a chess board here or mm -hmm. read, read poetry and such like. So that's the, the starting point of a live tour that we do um, on stages or on streams. Um, and we did it quite often already. Um, so we, we we try to make sense of this world that um, is a representation, a very like um, savage representation of um, mm -hmm. the world we are living in um, back then and nowadays. So um, we try to, to to bring sense into it with a crash course in I would say basic Marxism, where we uh, start in the mansions quarters, go into the industrial quarters to see how the workers work there and um, discuss who owns factories and the workers or the time of the workers more to say and um, then we we have previously passed the middle class districts which are also a very highly interesting talking point to eventually end in the in the lower class districts um, that we didn't see yet um, i don't know if we can maybe we can walk there uh sure. yeah it's not so far actually Opala. I mean, we've seen most of the industrial district when we were entering the city. Do you know the way? Yeah, I know the way. I think it's um, up the street and to the right. Also, we okay. discussed um, the role of, of church and police in the society. You see uh, two policemen on the right. So um, we thought um, oh, yeah. it's, it's so important to, um, obviously out of our uh, political standing, so important to give people um, basic um, knowledge about Marxism or Marxist theory on, on society. So um, we thought that um, at the same time, it's very boring to, to hear this, you know, economic formulas and, 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 and theories in the typical reading uh, circle. So we, we try to develop some uh, more appealing <laughs> format in which um, maybe some sometimes there is shooting and, and, and beating <laughs> of policemen, but <laughs> most of the times we're quite quite um, strict in explaining and, and lecturing. I mean, we, we, we spoke a bit about this, um, talking about the origin of Total Refusal and with Operation Jane Walk. Um, and I want to ask you a question. I, I kind of just, I can't, I can't let you get away without asking this, because I know mm -hmm. formerly you used to describe the work you did as a digital disarmament, and you kind of described, oh. um, you know, the, the using of the logic of the first person shooter um against itself to you know try to subvert it in some way um and you know i mean it's i think fairly obvious to to look at what's happening here and that's uh, i think maybe still a part of the formula but um you uh you currently uh characterize your work as um a pseudo marxist uh media guerrilla um i just like to kind of you know ask uh what the reframing um, does and and uh, how that you know positions you uh, these days um, more broadly or you know uh, in yeah to try to I don't know do the work that the collective is uh, attempting to do. Mm, I I think it it it, uh, it this is a form of I guess you could call uh, radicalization that mm -hmm. that developed out of our critical approach of dealing with the media because at first. Uh, you know, I, we talked about Operation Janewalk before, and and where the the main observation was: okay, you've got this game world here that that uh, is so beautifully made, but you can't really interact with it. The, the only it, it's basically every object in there is just there as a as a as a cover for you know the shooting mechanics. 
Um, so, so here, the the observation was okay. You've got all these. We've got ninety percent of all mainstream games deal with war or combat in in some manner or in some right. form. Right. Right. And and as soon as you're as you're playing against the intended gameplay, you're automatically becoming a pacifist just because like that most of the things that games <gasps> intend you to do is fight. Look, there's a character yeah. again from our film right there. Uh, oh, that's the, yeah, that's uh, the, uh, yeah. The, 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 the laundress. The laundress. Hmm. Hello, nice to see you. I don't think she recognizes you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because I look like a buffalo. Of course she doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, two things, I guess, the more you think about, you know, why uh, uh, both in terms of when you think about why games are always the same, why they repeat the same gameplay formulas, the same soldier and hero tropes, uh, that leads you automatically to to you know learning about capitalism, dealing with capitalism. Yeah. At the same time, if you think about the matter at hand itself, about uh, about war, why wars are waged, about if you think about pacifism, that's also something you can't do without. Uh, dealing with imperialism, with capitalism, so it, 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 this is, like, I guess, a natural evolution of the, of of, of our media analysis that that sort of happened. This and is like yeah, the... been to yeah, the yeah. cemetery. I didn't know there is a cemetery. Yeah, we can oh, check it out. I've never been there as well. Yeah, yeah. We should... Can we go in? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. There's the gate. I'm not sure uh... if we're allowed in there. Oh. oh I'm sorry. I'm oh, so I just uh, squeezed her right in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, and then uh, pretty clearly here, yeah, we're in we're in New Orleans now, right? <laughs> Maybe Savannah, Georgia. No, I, I think New Orleans the way the graves are. But um, yeah, and like uh, another thing that we spoke about when when you were uh, initially introducing Operation Jane Walk is it, it wasn't originally a film. Uh, it exists as a film uh, of documentation. And you have again this uh, a lecture, um, or I, I don't know how you call it—a lecture performance or a live performance yeah. from within the game of Red Dead Redemption. Can you talk a little bit about that practice? Um, it seems to me, you know, very interesting that there's a, a high degree of juxtaposition between, like, um, yeah, these literally programmed NPC characters and the playable free will. Um, I'm thinking again, also like uh, uh, another of your works. Um, you'll have to remind me of the title, uh, where you're refuting the violence by instead marching in a circle, um, and it, it plays a little bit with the boundaries there, where it's uh, kind of programmed free will um, to to resist this violence and become fat pacif fat fat pacif pacifist. <laughs> yeah. Um, how to start? Uh, there. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot there, but yeah. <laughs> take, take, take as an entrance what you will. Yeah, so the the performance question is, um, yeah, it has been there from the beginning um, to that, that we had the feeling that it's kind of fun to use games. Um, Wow! Look at the beautiful light now. I mean, this is this is just uh, this is this is beautiful. If we go to the um, left, there's the greenhouse. It's a great, great. Ah, place. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Good. That's... Um, yeah, it, it it's something we have. It you know, games are so fun. They if you play them live, they will always surprise you, and you can never plan everything in advance, really, because you always, um, yeah, get in conflict with um. With the algorithm and with the NPCs and with the game world, it will always it, it never works as you want it to work. Um, and yeah, we we had fun. Like th there was the basic idea to to play video games, but not to play them, but like to play against them somehow or to play yeah. against the rules. Uh, so this idea of counter gaming is something that's been with us for all these years. Um, and yeah, it's also just it's just a it's it's kind of a nice where oh, you turned into something else now. <laughs> I'm stuck. Um, it's I, we just believe it's a good it's good format to do like oh live performances because we also like to um, 
we like to have lectures you know we write scientific texts as well right and we like to um we like information to be delivered and playing a video game is just you know pedagogically that's a very good frame for people to yeah to get in contact with something that they usually wouldn't um get themselves in contact with so yeah it has it has uh, several um aspects why we enjoy to do this but i but i, I think, think th this this sorry you were uh, i didn't know you were oh, so gonna I, say I, mean, uh, I will make some nicer weather again yeah i think this uh this life aspect uh it also carries over into the uh, the film projects because it it's quite different to you know when you're when you're creating a real film with a camera in the game you're you're always working with a set with set pieces that you can't fully control like right. some of our films even those that are conceptualized not as performances but films they play in environments either with other players in them like for example how to disappear um so we're there we're on a we're on a server on a public server with you know 60 other players who, who don't know that we're there and who we interact with uh, whom we think we interact with but also uh, when we're working with um, without other players like in, in hardly working it, it also you also at the same time there are some document some aspects of documentary filming and and unexpected events that that, that sort of influence uh where the project is going which is why we we don't have a process where we work with a strict uh script per se uh, i mean we do we do have um content that we formulate as an for example as an essay before and we think about how to connect how, where to establish connections between the 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 essay or the lecture and the game but it always then they always then influence each other so there's no one 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 way it's not a one-way speed from the script to the to how it's then implemented in the film or in the game maybe hmm? maybe this is a good time to to turn back into birds and uh, uh -huh, try maybe. to to see what's at the edge of the world sure let's, let's, think it's crushing. let's do that yeah. we have another question is it red dead redemption yes it is <laughs> Okay, so you also, are, I think, no. hmm? the California you, Condor and, uh, and California the invincibility. Condor yeah, and, and the invincibility, okay. don't forget it. Okay, yeah, hope Condor. I'm not going to get ridden over before I turn myself invincible again. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm ready to take off whenever you guys are. But but I we am. need to change the weather. We cannot fly in these weather conditions. Okay. All right, I'm ready to take off too. Just let me, give me the cue. Uh, one second, I will make a nice sunny uh, beautiful morning, maybe even a bit earlier. So we see some the sun setting may, uh, um, um, appearing. And um, right, let's uh, let's fly you. if you are ready. Three, two, one, and go. Oh, sorry. RCP fly. <laughs> Not okay, a problem. we will go in there circles go. above you. I'm yeah. up. Perfect. We have to fly towards the east, towards the water. Yeah. So towards the sun. Towards the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's fly do, towards do the you sun. Have such an, do you have such an intuitive understanding of this game you know where east is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, or that's, that's only there. when you become a bird and, and you know exactly <laughs> where you're going. Yeah. In this case, it's easy because the sun is setting there. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> but you touched on something interesting before. I think you mentioned like the juxtaposition between like the NPCs and the 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 free willed avatar. Right. I think this is a really important aspect of 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 games. Um, the whole the whole matter of of agency. Um, maybe that's something we could also talk about. Yeah, because please. Because I feel like it's um, it's it's interesting how like for example if you if you look at game worlds and 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 um, if you look at how people uh, you know struggle to or, uh, or to to influence the world around them uh, how they how they are sh just kind of um, subject to dynamics whoa I was just 
Yeah, so you just me, teleported. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Okay. All right. Nice. I guess I'm next. <laughs> oh, there we go. Let us. Go no, no, I teleported you guys. No, no. Oh, no okay. All right. Us. We we yeah. weren't hitting uh, some kind of invisible boundary. No. No. Mm. no, should, no shouldn't no, be man. the case. We, we, we should just fly. Able to go quite I, a while. Like. Apologies to the viewers uh, who I'm giving <laughs> motion sickness to. That was the story. <laughs> Okay, where was I? Yeah, so so where in, in the real world you're subject to so many like social dynamics that you can't control. You're subject to, to you know, uh, uh, work dynamics that are out of your control. And and uh, in the game, you have the complete opposite. Uh, you're 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 in the in the shoes, or I don't know how how shoes adverts don't really wear shoes, but you're in the shoes of an avatar <laughs> who 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 have a who are who in in who inhabit the game world that is specifically made for them uh specifically made to be dominated by them so experience sover sovereignty right yeah the game kind of gives you this sort of promise that the tools you're getting are going to be enough to you know to reach goals to and to which and reaching goals in in most games means um dominating the game world you know unlocking more and more of the map gathering loot it, beating the game yeah 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 accumulating in a sense so there's a strong logic of accumulation uh that's that's pretty much the driver of most mainstream games or of of almost every single game that's kind of the basic narration right that you start small and then you invest money or time and uh, and energy and in the end you kind of grow bigger and in the end, it doesn't matter if it's a simulator or if it's a shooter game or an adventure game or whatever. It's just like really almost every time it's like the same that you you somehow end really dominating everything. And there is no monster that is so big that you couldn't slay it. Everything is kind of made uh, into your, you know, for you to to... Yeah, to have a nice experience. And the tools that the games give you there, I mean, if it's a good game, then they are kind of always just barely enough. They give you just barely enough, you know, power to um, solve the problems that you face. Yeah, and that way it's <laughs> it's it's made so... So that's why it... I think I lost you guys, by the way, if someone could oh, just... Oh, well, if, you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'll circle in the meantime. But didn't mean to, to, to uh, interrupt there. Um, if you want to no continue worries. going, let's let's wait until we've oh, all we found each other again. Perfect, got you. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, got so all they, of you. Maybe. The, Thank you. The game sort of fulfills, you know, this this promise that our capitalist societies also make but never uphold, which is this whole promise of meritocracy. You know, your 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 efforts or work uh, pays off. I mean, by now, pretty much all of us know that there's little to no class mobility so this is a promise that is not made good on in in real life but in in games this is quite this is like a quite core concept to to uh to most to most gameplays wait a second uh, we're just crossing uh the yes. line where um... yeah you see how the texture turns into mud yeah yeah yes, there's you have like a... the end of the grass or something mm -hmm. here <laughs> Is that uh, it's just yeah. not rendered, or it's a totally yeah, different text? Rendered. I see. We are we are but... far beyond the point where you could normally, if you weren't yes. a, a, a bird, move to. So so you so, would never get here normally. Also, also the area behind the line, the, Look at the... Where, where you can still see textured right. grass. This is still this is already the end of the world because you see there is nothing like it. it there is just some trees, some grass, and then it gets less and less, um, con consecutively. Um, it's, yeah. So, so when we when we first crossed the water, we were already outside the map, and and the further you go, the less the map makes sense and the less rendered the world is. Hmm. I tested the uh, landing here before, and and you actually also fall through it. It's just uh, there's water sure. underneath it, and there is no collision detection anymore in the, on the ground. Mm -hmm. mm, so it really becomes it. swamp. Yeah, <laughs> in <a> sense. <laughs> But is that true? Because we landed here. We well, I, I flew further out. I don't know. It, it was beyond where there, there were no trees even there. Where ah, okay, okay. And you just fall through. Uh, yeah, but uh, and and it's it's quite interesting, this whole thing with 
meritocracy is you can really observe uh, how, for example, pay to win mechanics. So the exact thing that you have that are the norm in real life are are a surefire uh, reason to cause a shitstorm whenever they come up in games. So when developers, uh, you know, release games where you can actually spend more yeah. money to, yeah, to, yeah. to get an to get an advantage over other players, then that's a surefire way to cause a scandal. So so this is an interesting juxtaposition where where players here are really allergic in this whole realm of of games and playing to the thing that really dominates their real life. Yeah, there's no super packs, no uh, no Citizens United in, in the gaming world, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, one can already see in the back that the this is where the trees end. Mm. Yeah. That's the end of the, how is it called? The tree line or something? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe we can land at some point. We can try. Or, or but, do you want yeah, to... We... You want to if, proceed into the into the nothing? Do, yeah, if point. we if we land, we should probably do it here. Uh, otherwise, I think we might fall through the map again. Right. So then, are you gonna look uh, which landmark could we? There's some tiny the, trees a bit a bit in the back. Uh, to the right or which ones? Ah, the, straight ahead, twelve o'clock. Straight ahead on on east. I okay. see. Uh huh. Yeah, There's a very that's, small that's... forest back there. Maybe it's the last forest. Also, maybe we take this one. The small yeah, trees where you have the tiny trees and one large tree in the middle yeah right? yeah tiny trees and one large tree that's what, yeah let's that's go for going. Well, maybe i i hope i see the same one i mean we, we're in a group so mm -hmm. they teleport, okay. teleport you wasn't there also this bit somewhere in this like no man's land out here where oh, yeah. there were assets from the first game like a, a fort <laughs> yeah yeah but like that, that? it was in the other direction but close to where we started yeah we, we also there is something that we that we call the the black sea and where, where just everything including the skybox stops to render and then everything turns black but i don't know if we can make it there <laughs> <laughs> i think it would and if you black. jump down then you fall forever and at some point you're being teleported back on the map hmm oh, that's crazy maybe maybe we take the, we, the large tree yeah i think so that's what i was going to suggest this big one, the, the big one of this. Yeah, the, towards the end of this small forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we can walk a bit more towards the end. All right, landing, landing. No, I fell and through the ground. Fall through the water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there I'm you go. The oh, right into the water. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. All right. Oh okay. no. Yeah. Now, now I'm below the, the water, flying in the. Water. This is great. I think this is the end. <laughs> I, I, I think so too. <laughs> yeah, All maybe right. If I turn into an alligator, no. I think this yeah, is yeah, over. Can can you can you swim? Can you can you be a fish and and swim out here? No. Or, I mean, I'm, we're I'm like an alligator. You can turn into an alligator. This is working. You can swim but, as an alligator. Mm -hmm. Oh really? But will you will you die okay. if you transform into a person here now, or what happens? I'm gonna I try. I think you're falling on. Then you're swimming like the alligator. No, it doesn't. For me, it, I, I think it broke. I don't. I don't know. I, I'm not. I getting did, I, here, I think. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's. Uh, uh, oh, I can. I kind of see myself. Oh man, this is this is weird. I oh. found you. Hey, I, I got you. Hey, yeah. hey there. Look at now that. The alligators. Un oh, nice. Wow, uh, you're I'm glitching trying. out like crazy. I mean, I'm glitching out too. This is really yeah, everyone nuts. is. Yeah. <laughs> oh hey, but, uh, that might be a nice, uh, you know, um, ending <laughs> position for this tour because we are below these mountains. Yeah, are, you can see the yeah. trees from underneath here. Yeah. <laughs> Robin would say we are below the tree line. I think so. <laughs> the trees. Oh my God! Look at that. That's surreal. Yes, it's beautiful. But still, the swimming is nice. It's peaceful. Very peaceful. Are we actually swimming? I'm moving so slowly that I... I don't think I'm actually swimming. I think I'm kind of uh, yeah. floating and... You have to disable the bird fly mode. Swim. Yeah, yeah, no, it works. But it's quite oh, slow. Even, it, even when I'm really... alligator, I'm a bird fly mode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to disable the bird fly mode. Uh, no, no, I, I, I disabled flight and that's why I dropped. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Then you're fine. Yeah, whatever. I think uh, we will need some time to get out here. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, well, guys, I, um, you want to take a, a last second and talk about any upcoming projects or, or make any announcements while we have some people here? Um, sure. Yeah, that's maybe a nice uh, uh, last question. Um, yeah, there's there's some projects coming up. Um, Adrian, Susie, and Yona are just finishing another film project called uh, A World at Stake. You want to say something about this, maybe? Yeah, we um, try to use games that we usually would not use so much. So we went into sports video games, into a FIFA, the famous soccer video game, and a rally game, and a golf game. And um, um, maybe in reference to what Michael explained about agency, we, we try to, to to follow the question of, of agency and uh, in the relationship between audience and athletes on the field. So that's that's something I had, and maybe the, the the movie that is in the distribution right now that I'm Robin made with me and Mike. Maybe you want to talk about that? Um, sure, it's uh, it's called Kinderfilm. Mm -hmm. um, we cannot show it uh, at the uh, Goethe Institute, unfortunately, because it's still in the festival circle. So it's uh, kind of you can only see it at festivals. Um, and I think the New York premiere is still up to come, so um, you can you yeah maybe you can wait for it. Um, and uh, it's a film shot in GTA Five, dealing with a really weird topic. And um, yeah, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's about something really crucial that is actually missing in all these game worlds. But um, and it's called Kinderfilm, so yeah, <laughs> we're not, I'm not saying anything else. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then and we're, we're also working, working on. on... Yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, you go ahead. No, you go. You. <laughs> okay. And then we're also working on a uh, on a on a performance right now, another live performance, actually in um, the successor of the aforementioned Tom Clancy's The Division, which is Tom Clancy's The Division Two, and which. Um, interesting enough place during a pandemic in Washington where you can actually uh, storm the Capitol and that came out uh, before the actual Capitol riots took place. So we're using that as a backdrop to look at the uh, the context of the Capitol riots. Um, Stranger than fiction. Hmm. Yeah. Really prophetic almost somehow. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's and there are more projects also, but I think that that that's enough. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I, I can't thank you all enough, uh, Adrian, Michael, and Robin. Uh, a part of Total Refusal. Um, again, if uh, if any of you are out there is in the New York City area, um, we have the exhibition running through uh, April twenty fifth. Uh, please come by and pay us a visit and watch the films, and be on the outlook uh, on the lookout for uh, forthcoming projects by Total Refusal. Yeah, thank yes, you. Uh, thank you so much for having us. Um, if you want to um, uh, make our colleague Leonhard very happy, you can follow us on Instagram um, or you can watch, uh, you can check out our webpage, which is totalrefusal.com. Uh, uh, yeah, there are all, almost all of our projects are there. So it's if you're interested in our work, you can um, we can uh, see what we else, what we are up to else. Thank you, Zach. It was All great. right, it was great fun. Thank you so no, much. Thank you for for showing me around and ending at the, <laughs> yeah, the end of the world. <laughs> it was really <laughs> fun. All <laughs> right, guys. Totally was. Bye bye. Bye.